king, the Europeans wish to conquer us. They will not stop until the whole of Africa is theirs. We must fight back for our people. Maneska, you are asking me to take them to war. War. Some things are worth fighting for. I cannot begin to describe how incredible this film is and thank you all so much for making it. It is so dope. Um, Gina, I have to start with you. I, I want people to see it. It's aspirational, it's regal, it's fierce and it is the best piece of wish fulfillment because it actually happened and we just didn't know. So where did it start with you when you set about to put this incredible epic with these incredible black women and John? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, I mean, it started with two things. It started with Viola Davis is attached, mm -hmm. and it started with the script. Um, reading the script, it literally took me five minutes, and I read that these women rise up out the grass, and I said, I gotta shoot that. And as I kept reading, I just kept getting more and more enamored by these women that I had never heard of before. And not just how badass they were, but the humanity of it, the sisterhood. And just the more I read, the more that I started to research, the more I wanted to put them up on screen um, for us, certainly to be inspired by, but the world as well. The way I came out of it, I just said, it was so fierce, but it was incredibly feminine. Like right in the middle of these huge battle sequences, you saw just black women doing their thing, man. It was so great. And, Miss Viola Davis, to see you at the center of that. Again, I just, I didn't know I wanted to see you beat that many people, but I'm so glad that I did. <laughs> and you know what, I want to beat that many people. <laughs> yeah. That's what I wanted to ask you, like how much of that was fulfilling for you, not just as an actor, but as a black woman, but just somebody who's been on these sets and seen this stuff as, as part of your craft and really getting to dive all the way into it with this one. Well, you know, I think that when I started off being an actor, I just wanted to be like Miss Tyson. I wanted to create magic, that sort of, um, you know, that alchemy, you know, to put out in the world. And I wanted to be somebody. And then as I went out into the acting profession, I realized how little agency we had as black actors and especially as black women. And when I say agency, not only was our presence not seen in movies, when it was seen, we were metaphors. We were devices, we were best friends, and we were never, ever complicated or beautiful. And then that was probably the biggest disappointment in my life. So shooting this movie, it was like somebody really um, handed me my dream on a plate. You know, it's like God spoke to me and said, you know what, it's possible, when I didn't think that it was, you know. I mean, this is ours. We're at the center of this narrative. Our strength, our beauty, our, our, we matter. We matter. <laughs> you know, we do, we matter. And we can, and we could spearhead a movie and put it forth in the world and everybody wants to see it. Yeah. You know, everything that I've been told as an actor and as a black woman, I didn't realize how much of it was a lie. And this is my redefinition of it. My opinion. Thank you. Speak on it. I'm sorry. I'm like, I need to like stay professional and you're yeah. really pushing me on this one. Um, I'm going to make it light on this one. <laughs> I mean, how do y'all do this on set? I'm like trying to like stay composed and she just takes us to church about the real. Too. So I, I have to say, I feel blessed to be in this room, but girl, you I, look, Barry Jenkins, Underground Railroad and doing that. And then this, like, I would say like, was it, you know, I wouldn't even say intimidating or like amazing or thrilling because I'm like, you already went on this odyssey and now you get to do it with Viola Davis and these other women. So what was it like coming onto this set knowing that, yes, it's going to be a huge undertaking of a role, but also the physical and then the people you're coming along with it? Like, what was it like going on this journey with this team? It was nothing short of amazing, I think. And for me, it started like way before set. Um, after having been cast, Gina and I went on our own adventure, Muay Thai. Sessions, one-on-one <laughs> -on -one sessions. Gina, you enjoyed that? <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed that? <laughs> and then pre-production training where I got to meet everyone and work with everyone quite closely. Um, 
suffering together, struggling, getting stronger, crying, wanting to quit, but then, you know, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> and then, like, by the time we got to set, we'd already built such a solid relationship that um, there was no space to be intimidated or to be scared. It was the realization of a collective dream. You know, it was us now playing and putting together a project that we would then gift the world. And, yeah. Uh, John, I'm gonna bring it to you, sir, and I'll just put it to you this way. I just loved watching you in this role, just embody this regal king. I was like, this is like coming to America 3 right here in like a totally different way, but in like that same aspirational sort of regality to it. But this is a real historical figure that not a lot of people knew about it. Was that what really attracted you to this, the real life aspect of this? Or was stepping into, I mean, I think it's similarly like with Breaking, you've, you've done this before, you've stepped into these real men. Does that change it when it's a movie like this of the scale? I just wanted to be on set by the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be real, like, you know. <laughs> It's not every day, you know, it's not every day you get the opportunity and, and, and Gina, Gina also, um, having, having directed some of, of my favourite movies, I wanted to witness something special. I, I, I didn't know whether I'd had the opportunity to be in a movie like this um, because of the reality that we know of, of this industry, but hopefully mm -hmm. that, you know, we, we hope and we have faith that that will change. Mm -hmm. But I just yep. wanted to witness black women, just not black, but brown skin, darker women, uh, being exalted in this way, um, in a way that I hadn't, I haven't recently seen in in in, in its grounding energy, um, and as Viola said, they have the best friends or facilitator to a white man story, yeah. and I just wanted to to see them facilitate themselves, and that for me was it was great to witness. It was powerful. Oh, and and I just I cannot tell people enough about what they're going to get to see on screen, and you two ladies did a lot of that. I would say both physically, but also just what you did. With By the your way, character. we need to split Lashana into two. It's her back muscles. <laughs> Those are two separate. Those are two separate. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. It's only right. It's only right. Well, no, but she would be. I will talk your nose. Listen. <laughs> Hold up, though. But Sheila and Mashana, let's keep it real. I've seen both of you ladies do your thing in yeah. physical roles recently, literally mm -hmm. recently, both of you. So, but I have to say, y'all really took it up a notch with this one. Both of you did have to do it. So talk about that knowing, yes, you've done physical roles before, and Lashawn, I'll start with you, but just what you guys had to updo on the training with this one, because I've, I've heard about what Gina did, did to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I wanna hear that. Please tell us a story. What's in the press notes? I mean, they, they told me. <laughs> oh, wow, that's, yeah. Yeah, I've done stunts before, I've done physical work, have a physical background, but nothing in, in life can prepare you for the, <laughs> the amount of um, the, the depths you have to go to in your mind mm. to undertake a physical role like this. And also to have a director, black woman, who can look at you just by the work that you've done and just by, I don't know what else you saw, Gina, because I didn't believe it in myself. But you were like, so you're doing your own stunts? And I was like, okay, so, sorry, I didn't understand the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you said, just me for months. Because you know we have incredible stunt women in this world who yeah. can also really support us in this movie. Um, but I was really excited. <laughs> I was really excited to, to do that because when yeah. do you ever get the opportunity to have someone believe in you that much mm -hmm. who is taking care of a story about your people you know it, it may never come again just like you said yeah. John I don't know if if a movie like this will be in this shape with this vibration with this kind of cast with this kind of cohesion and love in and around it yeah. so um, yeah. I, I was ready to to take that on and also d give myself the opportunity to dive into the character like the the juices of the character like the energy of her her spirit is one ancestral but also I I know what it's like to train all day every day and not know what I'm doing and question myself and have to lean on you know the sisters we've created in the cast and and have to really go there so that the emotions you see on screen the physical work is actually real and I, I'm proud to to say that the legacy I'm trying to build for myself and my career this was a part of the journey and actually it's probably a a, a, a real t a, th this is a real turning point for me in terms of upping my game mm. as an artist. Mm. I mean, they need mm -hmm. to see though. <laughs>
<laughs> it's like game, and then there's what y'all did. And, wow. and look, Sheila, I, I'll go ahead and put it to you this way. That's physical aspect of it, but when you're reading the script and reading your character, you're the one that has to say to Nanisk, no. Like, uh, like you have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Viola Davis, and I'm just sorry I don't have that in me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I ever could, so good on you, girl. But what was that like? She's the only one that can, I'm looking. <laughs> You're the I mean, sweetest lady. I'm mm -hmm. the nicest man, but I wouldn't tell you no for anything. <laughs> so what's that like for your but character? You know what? I, I think what you've said there is is absolute testament to Viola as an actor because mm -hmm. the fact that I was able to step on set and feel like it was a genuine collaboration, there, there's, there's, there was none of that. You know, obviously I have huge reverence and respect and love for her both as a fan and also now, I, I hope as a friend, as a friend. Yeah. <laughs> as a friend, cool. <laughs> you know, when you're about to say something and then you're like, wait. <laughs> 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 Especially if you keep those cookies coming. <laughs> 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 there are cookies? Okay, we keep going. I want to make sure you get your point. But, um, you know, of course I have that, but when we stepped on set, we were both just actors and we were working on our craft and we were, you know, trying to be generous to each other because that's so important when you're working in scenes, when you're training, when you're looking at, you know, the scripts, when you're trying to dissect you know, what needs to be done in order to bring this thing to fruition is to have the generosity and the vulnerability, mm. um, you know, with each other. And I absolutely felt like I had that with Viola. So, you know, it just allows the characters to come through. There's no, you know, rank and hierarchy in that way. And that's, that's it's not often that you get that, I'm going to be really honest, like mm. particularly with people of Viola's stature, it's really not often. So that was a blessing and a gift for me. And it just... It meant that those moments where we got to show the vulnerability of the characters as well were one of some of my favorite moments. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and watching it, they're absolutely that. And also I will say, there are not a lot of black women that have that little Oscar trophy on their shelf and you've gotten to work with two of them and they're literally <laughs> the greatest with Halle Berry and Miss Viola Davis. Right. <laughs> That's some pretty great mm -hmm. moments right there. Um, Gina, I have to bring it to you next because in addition to the incredible camaraderie and sisterhood we see on screen, Man, these action sequences, they are intricate. They are like it, dances that I, I wouldn't be able to figure out with 10 years and, and all of the stopping and starting. So how did you sort of set about the technical aspects of that? Because I saw what you guys did in Old Garden. I loved it. And I feel like this film is just even more of a grander scale and the stunts are even higher. Um, I mean, certainly it's, it starts with actors that are willing to go there and to put in the work. I didn't have to worry about cutting around stunt doubles with this. I got to focus on the performance and the character and the story that's being told in the moments. And that's what makes great action is, is that, is the performance. So they made my job much easier in that. Also, Danny Hernandez, our incredible stunt coordinator, fight coordinator, like what he helped me create um, was invaluable. Met him on Old Guard loved him, but also loved who he is and how he can inspire, and I knew I wanted that for them. Mm -hmm. They needed to be able to trust him, um, one, to get them there, and two, that they're gonna look good doing it, and safely, that's, yeah. that's a big thing. So that was really our collaboration, and my team, Polly Morgan, our DP, editor, Terry Shropshire, it was like, how are we gonna make these women look dope, legit beat men, make it feel visceral and raw and real, and under a PG-13? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Y'all push it though. <laughs> it's really a, it's a hard it. PG-13. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of great collaboration and, and vision of what we wanted. This couldn't just be action that was good enough because it was women. Nah, it just had to be dope. These are warriors, true warriors, and we wanted to showcase that. Oh man, did y'all. Uh, I will say, with Naniska, when you watch her throughout this film, you see every shade of what women have to go through, from being the fiercest of warriors to having to be really vulnerable. And I have to ask you, Miss Viola Davis, when you were sort of becoming this character who's obviously a fictitious version of, of who this person could be, as well as uh, real life counterparts, but how did you approach that research? How did you approach sort of embodying what is 
a fictional story, but again, these, these events, these people really lived. Um, you know, a, a great director, actor, Uta Hagen, said that that's one thing that she doesn't like about period films, that everybody wants to act, period. When human <laughs> beings don't really change, mm -hmm. time changes, but people don't. Mm -hmm. Naniska is a sexual assault survivor. Yeah. She's gang raped. I mean, that's it in a nutshell, you know, and she's got to go to work. And she's had to go to work for a year after year after year, bearing those memories. And so um, Gina had me read Roxane Gay's book, Hunger. I read, I, I saw a documentary like probably 12 times, really 12 times, City of Joy, about the sexual assault survivors in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is brutal, by the way. And you think about those memories of feeling um, like everything that you are has been ripped from you during that sexual assault. It's what happens. I mean, literally, women leave their bodies. Um, and there is no one in a movie, th in my opinion, the movie that I want to make, I don't want anyone to sit in a movie theater and escape, and just escape watching on an action film. I want it to be a human event. Because so often we haven't been, we haven't been present in human events. I want to humanize her. You know, I, I, I feel like I'm an actor. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <You know>? come on. <laughs> and so yeah. um, it, was, it, it was important to her story because it is who she is. Um, she even says it, my scars are, are your scars are your pride. Um, and um, I think by the end of the movie, she probably gets to that, to really, yeah. I can't wait for people to see the ending and stay for the credits. I'll just put that one out there too yes. for anybody watching this one. Mm -hmm. um, I also have to add that I will never forget this moment. Viola Davis, like, I think I'm an actor. Like, <laughs> I, don't think I, I don't think I'm ever going to clock that one. It's something oh. that's <laughs> like, oh. just a little bit, I don't know, <laughs> defining the word. Uh, Tusa, I want to bring it to you because your character is such a great avatar for anybody watching it mm. because we all want to think we could be that badass. We're not, but like, <laughs> we, want, we, we were with you. <laughs> but, but that character of sort of like the young, sort of brash recruit, what I loved was how it was colored with black femininity, with, even within this character. And I think that's a balance that both you and Gina worked on with the character. And talk about how y'all did that. Oh, uh, well, I think Navi is the way she is as a means of survival. Yeah. You know, she had to look out for herself. She's had to affirm herself. And so even when she walks into the palace, all she has is herself. And so her coming up against Naniska, you know, them butting heads, is because she, one, desires to be feared, admired, and, you know, and, and seen. Um, mm -hmm. What I usually say is, now we fear is being alone more than death, which is why she willingly goes to join. Well, not willingly. Uh, join the, uh, the army, but it's Izogu who teaches her that, Izogi, that she's not alone and she doesn't have to keep resisting to get to where she needs to be. And that's a, learn, a, a lesson that she has to learn. But when she comes in, all she has is herself. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. Um, yeah. I think every character here, because you're talking about soldier stories in a lot of ways, this is the soldier stories, there's archetypes within it. And Lashana, I love your character because she just very much reminded me a little fast bender in 300, you know, like a little crazy, but also <laughs> really cute with it. <laughs> like, real cute with it. I mean, and, and trust me, just as fierce, legit. But, <laughs> but with that, that sort of idea of, of playing within her sort of like playfulness, she's such a big sister mm -hmm. to Tuso's character. And I loved how, again, it's, it's a different shade. We have to do it a little bit more like us. And, and talk about that balance, because you guys were just, your, your chemistry together, and that's the best way I can put it. Mm -hmm. I just was like, oh, the big sister I didn't have. <laughs> when you ha are gifted with an actor who is giving you as much as you believe you're giving inside, it's mm. easy work. Easy, easy light work. And we would show up to set and <laughs> just like discuss it a little bit and then just have some quiet time and then play. And then, play, yeah. and then we've got it and then we move on. And it, it, it's nice when it's that simple because you realize that all the work you've done on the character, all the research you've done, the environment, the, the space that you've created on this set is enabled you to really dive deeper into these people and to represent the people that you, we 
are the Ogojia women. And um, it's, 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 I, I realize that through uh, Nawi and Zogi's connection, that they are backwards healing. Mm -hmm. So for myself, mm -hmm. as an actor playing this character, I'm speaking to myself, my younger self, as I'm speaking to Nawi. I'm giving myself the words that I wasn't given when I was younger, when I didn't see myself on screen, or I didn't have friends that looked like me necessarily. And with certain moments that our two characters share, you'd start to understand how important mentorship is, how important mm -hmm. it is to have that big sister that maybe you don't mm -hmm. have in your family, but you find elsewhere. And I'm really grateful that Azogi is able to impart the wisdom and the knowledge that she does to Nawi, because then Nawi just goes off and runs with that in her own incredibly powerful way, which is amazing for all generations to see that, you know? So um, it's really important having that connection in the movie because you're just reminded of so many things you didn't get as a child that you're now able to cement in your adulthood.